I also want to thank you, Elon. We're very excited to do this. Uh, one of the reasons I started ARC is because innovation is being completely mispriced in the public markets as the public markets go passive. Yeah, you I know? totally agree. The Actually, antithesis. Your, totally. John Bogle, who's awesome, may he rest in peace, uh, like when his last comments was like, the, there, there's too much, the, the passive index funds are too big. And he was the guy that really, you know, obviously came up with the, you know, the low fee index fund. Yes. So it's, and um, the other thing that's happening again, a problem for innovation in the public markets is the big public asset managers, they started looking for innovation in the pre-IPO space, right? So, you know, where we operate is inefficiently priced like I've never seen in my career. Most people looking at our portfolios would not agree because our PE ratios to this year, next year look very high. But we want companies like Tesla to be investing aggressively to capitalize on the massive opportunities we see ahead. So we thank you for not going private. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and you're welcome. Because we do think if you are going to achieve your goals, you need to be public to scale that quickly and to enjoy the kind of exponential growth that you will enjoy because you're on the right side of change. So we're really excited to be here. Now, what we're not going to talk about too much is electric vehicle sales and certainly not production, right? right. right? Because we believe, and just want to get your high level reaction to this based on, and this is based on Sam Corus's battery work, uh, cost decline, some of the um, amazing things you're doing with battery pack systems, new chemistries and so forth. The cost decline if we were relying on that analysis alone, we would see EV sales, given the price elasticity of demand, increase from 1.3 million last year to 26 million in 2023, so in five years. So that's a 20-fold increase if the battery capacity were there and so and production capacity. What do you think about that? That would be the high-level assumption, top-down. Sounds about right. Wow. So that's a th about a third of total global sales at that time. I mean, it might be off by a year or two, but not by much. That's huge. Now, for our bottom-up modeling, we, we're very conservative. So the range that we are out there in terms of our bare bull range, 700 to 4,000, that is based on one point... Tesla selling 1.6 million units in that year, which given our top-down analysis and given how far you are ahead of any other auto manufacturer and any other technology company, that 1.6 million is increasingly looking way too conservative if you can scale to take the proper amount of share or the share you should take given how advanced you are. So maybe you could give us some of your thoughts there. Yeah, I want to emphasize that if I give estimates, these are really, there's a lot of guesswork here. Oh. And especially on an exponential curve, a year or two difference makes is, is enormous. Obviously, it says we've got a lot of criticism for the number of cars we delivered in 2017. Because if you say like the area under the curve of production in 2017 was quite small because it was the beginning of an exponential ramp. But then once that got going, the area under the curve was enormous. And that's why people were so shocked. I, I kept trying to say this, but they, people don't understand, I guess, what an exponential means. Or, or They don't. They're yeah. all linear thinkers. Yes. yes. Yes, exactly. So like last year, we basically doubled our global fleet. Because we, cumulatively, we made and delivered more, as, about, about as many cars as we had made in our entire history. I know. Right, it's exactly. Crazy. I'm, I'm, you crazy. guys know, but I'm just <laughs> crazy. Sort of, for the audience out there. Most people <laughs> thought it was impossible. Yes. And if you do a linear extrapolation, it certainly would be. But when making estimates against an exponential, small changes in the, the calendar breakpoint um, have enormous percentage differences. The time difference is small, but the percentage difference is enormous. Now, I'm, just, I'm saying things that you guys know, but it's, this is for the broader audience yes, out there. Yes, no, we want this. Yes, we want people to understand this. Right. Like getting to 5,000 cars peak production per week was offset by approximately six months from my initial estimate last year. So I thought we'd be there end of 2017. It took us six months longer. In the grand scheme of things, six months late uh, for a massive new program is not much. 
but this was characterized in the press in terms of the percentage of units and instead of a calendar shift. And so it was perceived as a massive shortfall when in fact it was merely a six month delay. And when I give these, say, my guesses for the future, if you move six months or 12 months, these numbers are, it can be 50 to 100% different. So, but if you say like, what's my guess for 2021 is one and a half million cars for Tesla, something like that. 2021 and 2023, which is that 26 million, if we knew only the cost decline associated with the batteries, 2023 number, if we're right, could be 26 million, but it really, it's it's actually dependent on what you do more than almost any, and ch- what China does and what you do in China. Again, just guess, probably we do 3 million 